when a bacteria gains resistance mm. it affects all of us mm. it's not gaining resistance in one person's body it's gaining resistance with standard treatment okay and so when that standard treatment cannot work against that bacteria again it goes out different people get infected and it means that standard treatment will not work anymore okay you know and that puts everyone in trouble Antibiotic abuse. What is antibiotic abuse? What are the dangers of antibiotic abuse? These and many more is what we will be talking about on today's episode of the Healthy Happy Human Show. Hello and welcome once again. I am Cyril Aloysius, your host on the show as always. And with me in the studio is Patience, a lovely lady. I know she has patience a lot. So Patience, you're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank All right, you for so having me. Patience and I together are going to be doing real justice to this topic. Real justice. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to miss it for anything because it's going to be really educative. All right, so let's dive right into it. So, Patience, we all know about the word antibiotics. Do you mind um, giving us a general overview of what the word really means? So, antibiotics are just drugs or medications that are used to treat bacterial infection. Mm. That's it in simple terms. Now, they do this by either killing the bacteria mm. or they do this by stopping the multiplication of the bacteria. Okay. okay. All right. So, educate us further now. What is antibiotic abuse and <laughs> how does it affect our health? Now, um, antibiotic abuse is the misuse or the overuse. The of, misuse or yeah, the overuse. Of okay. antibiotics. Okay. okay, and this, what, what it does is it creates potentially very serious health effects, okay. all right? Um, and when we misuse or abuse antibiotics, this can develop what we call resistance. Okay. I'll explain shade. Um, now, different antibiotics work on different bacterial infections, right? Okay. Now, the more you keep abusing a particular one for different bacteria, they stop th that the drug stops working against that particular hmm. bacteria what that means is that bacteria has developed resistance to that drug okay okay and so the more we misuse this the more we abuse antibiotics um it causes really side effects it causes potentially serious health effects and it causes resistance okay. to those antibiotics all right thank you so much for your answer on that question now over the years over the years there yeah. have been several misconceptions there have been several myths about um, antibiotics which has actually led to the misuse of antibiotics do you mm. mind educating us on what some of this uh, misconceptions mm. are and uh, the myths yeah um i think the most important one is um you probably even have heard of it when people think that antibiotics can treat every form of infection mm. that is that false, one, no that's, that's um, general because <laughs> infections are different they can be caused by um, you know viral agents or fungal agents or mm. parasitic agents as well okay and in that case you can't use an antibiotic to treat say for instance you have a flu mm. and people would go to the pharmacy ah beg just give, give me, me one. antibiotics you know or you have you have an ear infection that's caused by viral agents and you just go ah beg give me one mm. you know so those are the things that we need to look out for that's a major misconception okay. the second one um, which i also think is important is you know what, I can just use my friend's leftover antibiotics. Because mm. you feel like, um, her symptoms are similar to mine. Maybe so she had a cough, yeah. She ah. also had a headache. I, I also have a cough and I have a headache. And you swipe that one. You listen. And you know, that is, it's very, very wrong okay. when we do that. Another one is when people think that, um, people have a very major misconception about what antibiotic resistance is. Or what's, well, in medical terms, antimicrobial resistance. Okay. Um, People think it affects a particular individual, like, ah, it affects this person. No. So when a bacteria gains resistance, mm. it affects all of us. Mm. It's not gaining resistance in one person's body. It's gaining resistance with standard treatment. Okay. And so when that standard treatment cannot work against that bacteria again, it goes out. Different people get infected and it means that standard treatment will not work anymore. Okay. You know, and that puts everyone in trouble. Mm. All right. And then I feel like another major one might also be the fact that um, once I feel better, I stop using my antibiotics. Oh. And that is lack of compliance. Okay. Um, you're supposed to finish the course. If the, if the 
if the doctor says take it for seven days you make sure you finish it doesn't matter how good you're just when you start afterwards. feeling better yeah, a little and then bit you better stop. you stop okay. you know and in that way what the what, what happens is that that bacteria develops resistance in that way Mm. You know, so those are some misconceptions that people need to take into account. And I think some people also <coughs> say, you know what, antimicrobial resistance is not a thing in my country. Um, well, if it's a thing in one country, best believe that it's going to affect, you know, everyone eventually. Okay. So um, th those are things and myths that people need to, to watch out for. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Are you learning? Are you learning? Because I'm learning. Okay, um, a quick one now. You know, when we take actions, especially when we abuse these drugs, yeah. obviously there are going to be consequences. So mm. would you mind educating us on the potential consequences that would befall people who actually go ahead to misuse these uh, antibiotics? Yeah, the first one, like I've mentioned, is the antibiotic resistance. Okay. And I don't think it's spoken about enough um, because the more these drugs don't work against a particular bacteria the worse it gets it means new drugs have to keep you know there's researchers have to keep going on okay. and it gets more expensive right the second one is increased severity of the diseases okay okay with, with, with time increase increased severity, severity exactly, of diseases exactly okay. um something that might just be what um a mild infection you know and then let's say that particular bacteria grows resistance to say penicillin for instance mm. all right the next time when it comes back it comes back in the worst form in this in a more you know it, it makes it, it it comes back as a severe a more severe case of that mm. particular infection okay okay another one might be increased cost of treatment okay what one particular antibiotic would have solved now we have um we need like four mm. just for one particular infection it makes okay. it worse in that way um, another one would just be the usual side effects then that happen because the more you have to take these antibiotics, the more you abuse them, the more you're also disrupting your normal flora. Now, mm. everyone has bacteria in the body, the good ones, the ones we call the good ones. And it's called the normal flora. Are there the good bacteria? Yeah, they are there. We Seriously? Have them, we have them in our body. Good bacteria. You know, and, and that's, in what my we body. Call, <laughs> that's what we call the normal flora. And the okay. more you abuse them, you're disrupting your normal flora. And that the makes normal stuff worse. flora. Yes, of the body. And that's what okay. we call the good bacteria. So those are things to watch out for, really, because the, the more you abuse these drugs, you are disrupting the normal one in your body, killing them off as well. And that causes potential side effects later on. All right, so tell us, um, what are the roles of healthcare providers in preventing the abuse of antibiotics? What are exactly are their roles? Uh, educate, educate, educate as much as possible. When you have patients, educate them on what compliance is. Okay, so what strategies you know, can be used? What strategies can be employed in order to educate the public now? I mean, what we're doing, this show, for instance, mm. you know, um, when, when doctors want to prescribe medication make sure you educate the patients on you know the type of antibiotic make sure you educate them on how to take it on the duration and you know emphasize the importance of actually finishing the course of that medication okay. all right um pharmacists have a role as well when when patients come try to find out if they really need that antibiotic right and i'd say that i know um in a country like nigeria it's you can actually just get that over the counter so you go and you ask for one and that's where the pharmacists um, come in that's why where the role is very important ask questions figure out do they really need it mm. right what do they need it for mm. okay have they seen a proper doctor have they seen a healthcare professional first of all before asking for one and um, you know that those those are ways and then we could also educate people about vaccinations okay you know and um, vaccinations help a lot to reduce infections mm. that people don't know about because if you if you get one that's viral infections you know cut short and then you're not needing antibiotics for anything educate people about personal hygiene i mean let's face it that's where we get these infections from from the first place okay personal hygiene um, yeah okay. personal hygiene good hygiene okay. and washing your hands sanitizing you know being in clean places so i'd say really that's where our role comes in um you know when when you go to hospitals usually you have these pamphlets that people keep that try to talk about um, antibiotic abuse or different kinds of topics those are things that we need to you know talk about and like i mentioned in the beginning shows like this that help to educate the public about you know things that they might not necessarily be aware of okay so lastly before i let you go now are there really alternative um, me measures or treatments for certain infections to actually uh, curb or reduce 
the high demand of these antibiotics yeah, in people? Absolutely. Um, now, some of them might sound a bit futuristic, but mm. um, there are some that people use you know, now. For instance, probiotics. Okay. Probiotics are very important. Um, you know, like the word antibiotics, they're against okay. you know, bacteria. Probiotics are, are, are for the good bacteria in our body, for the normal flora, and so that's what they help with. And so you, they're, they're in the market. You could take one a day, take one every day. It just helps keep your normal flora going, mm. reduces the severity of infections, and they're very good to take. Um, there are also herbal remedies out there in the market. Herbal um, remedies? Yeah, there are herbal remedies that people you use. You know these days when you say herbs, people just get scared. They feel it's all about juju. <laughs> no, it's all no. About, it's all about, you know, like yeah, di yeah. diabolism and stuff like that. Absolutely not. There's thyme extracts, for instance. We all know thyme. We use it. We cook with it, right? Um, and there are time extracts that help reduce the severity of um, and bacterial Sorry, infections. when you say time, do you mean time travel? <laughs> no. So fine. Just kidding. That we used to cook. <laughs> Just kidding. You know, um, garlic is actually a very good one. Garlic? Yeah. Garlic yeah but it leaves you with one well, kind of bad breath like that's that. That's why you ah. brush your teeth immediately after. <laughs> Even you when know? you brush. You know, garlic is very stubborn sometimes. Uh, but what, what would you prefer? Your health or, you know, you, you, you pick one. And it's not, you don't have to take it very often, but... Maybe even put it in hot water and drink it, but it, it definitely helps. Mm. And, you know, um, I was in a seminar recently and we talked about bacteriophages. Now, it's not a popular Bacteria topic. Bacteria what? Bacteriophages. Phages. Okay. Yes. So, it's, it, they're just, they're basically, what they do, they're viral, right? But they can cause an infection in bacteria, mm. right? And so, it's, it sounds futuristic, but that's um, the new supplement that a lot of healthcare professionals are going for right now. Okay. Um, it's, it's just an alternative to antibiotics, and I think that in the future, that will be a major thing, mm. right? But in the present, honey, honey helps a lot. Mm. You know, honey has a low pH, and that kills of bacteria in the body. Okay. Um, you know, so definitely honey. Please, for the sake of the viewers who don't really yeah. understand, what's low pH, please? Okay. When you say low pH, what do you mean? Okay, so basically, it's, it's a range, okay. right? The normal pH of the body is a 7. Low one is from 6 down, okay? What is this so pH the, in quotes? Oh, it's just like the range of the acid and the alkaline level in the body. Okay. 7 is the normal one. Okay, that's okay. what our body is, exactly. The range of the acid and, and the, the alkaline, alkaline level in the body. Exactly. Okay. So in this case now, when I say honey has a low pH, it, it's more acidic okay and so in that case it can kill off bacteria in the body mm. right and i mean honey is is a staple we put it in tea we put it every like it's it's just advisable to use it as often as you can okay you know so like i mentioned the probiotics honey garlic thyme extracts you know these are things that we can use as alternatives to antibiotics and remember it's more important to um practice safe hygiene Mm. Good hygiene, wash your hands as much as possible, as often as possible, stay in clean environments and try to reduce the occurrence of infections. Wow, 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 wow. So much valuable information in this discussion session. I hope you learned one or two things because if you did not, then you are on a long thin. Because I did and we have come to the end of today's episode of the show. Patience. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time with us on the show today. Thank you for having Any me. Any last words for our viewers? Uh, yes. Um, it's just like I've said before, antibiotic abuse is not a small thing. Mm. It's affecting everyone. Um, bacteria are getting resistant to a lot of medications. So it's important that we educate ourselves. It's important that we stay safe. It's important that we also educate our neighbors as well. Okay. It's important that we are compliant with our drugs. Um, do not use the wrong medication. Mm. Make sure to stick to what you're given. Make mm. sure to finish your course of antibiotics. Make sure to practice good hygiene. Make sure to stay in clean environments as much as you can. And you know what? Tell a friend to tell a friend. Educate people around you mm. and try to stay safe. And it is important that you click subscribe right now to our YouTube channel. And of mm. course, do all to follow us on our different social media platforms. Absolutely. All right. It is very, very important. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time with us on the show today. But we have come to... The end of another interesting and educating session on the Healthy Happy Human Show. My name remains Cyril Aloysius, your humble host as always. Up until next time, please don't forget, if you have questions to ask on this topic, drop them in the comment section and we will reply to them. Until next time, it's a bye for now and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.